Hello and welcome to Sharing Your Great Practice. Now this week we're in a decidedly wintry Newcastle upon Tyne at Heaton Manor School where the science department have been showing us how they've used the locality, the local heritage and history of the Tyne port to inspire a new curriculum for Year 8 Science. From the science of shipping through to buoyancy, the design of lighthouses and the analysis of Tyne rock samples, Richard Faraday and his colleagues have built a Year 8 science module. It started, I think, with the changes in the Key Stage 3 curriculum and the new Key Stage 3 curriculum, Key Stage strategy came in. I was working with a group of AST colleagues uh, across the city and we decided that we needed to obviously start with a blank slate and start developing something which, um, which first of all, was deliverable across... Uh, all ability ranges, something that was interesting for the students and something also which would, would be easy to resource and for uh, that all staff would be happy to teach. So we tried to tick all the right boxes so we came up with uh, different types of inquiry based curricula and culminating with this one which was uh, what is the future of shipping on the Tyne because it's relevant, it's uh, quite a maritime area, you've got the, the river and the industries on the river and from there we basically thought about where we could uh, fit in the Year 8 science so we thought obviously the geology of the time and the rocks of the time might be um, fits in nicely with the year eight rocks and weathering topics that um, we used to do. Equally lighthouses, we have to teach, you know, in the olden days we used to have to teach light in year eight, so we thought well, if we did a module on the lighthouses in the North East and we could obviously deliver the light curriculum. They form partnerships with organisations such as the Port Authority to design a scheme of work that takes the children out of the classroom to see science in action, to see the local community and the local environment. We've taken groups to actually the Port of Tyne Authority and actually had a tour of the Port of Tyne. And also when we were there we had uh, access to the, the environmental aspects of it and like, the ships they have to actually clean the Tyne. I think when they listen to other people, I think they listen better and listen harder. I think when it's coming from different, someone different, it's uh, the more likely to pay attention. If they're speaking to a professional, somebody from a different body rather than education, they do tend to actually pay attention and these are real people with real jobs as opposed to teachers who aren't. It brings the uh, topic alive when it engages with the student's own personal life. So they need, I think, that connection. Otherwise, it's something dusty and it's out from a book and it might not have anything to do with them. And a lot of the students these days, as soon as there's something talked about which is environmental, they get particularly interested in that because obviously it's always in the news and such like. Or if it's something to do with the local history um, because their you know, grandfather or someone else in the family may have in the past worked in the shipyards which are closing down now, etc. The time's changing a lot. It feels different rather than like thinking about somewhere that's miles away or all the way far down the coast. Because it's nice just to like think of something big about your local area. Once you've learned about it in school, you could go, you could say, go with your family down and you could say, oh, well, that's what I've been learning about. Because um, you've seen things where you are before and you learn more about it. Because if you've seen them and then you learn helpful. about them, you'll, you'll learn more about them. And like, it's, it's not like you learn about something that you've never heard of. One of the most important things about the work that the science department did at this school was balancing the need to engage, to interest, to enthuse these year eight pupils about science with making sure that they acquired key scientific terminology and knowledge along the way. Well, the national curriculum still needs to be covered, of course, so if you're uh, covering a topic in this particular way, um, you're using it as background illustrations of that work. And it could be if there's one experiment about a lighthouse that's about optics or something, then it might need a further four or five lessons to make sure that all of that light work's covered. But still, it all hangs from that pivotal point of interest, of engagement with the students. Practical work is at the heart of this scheme of work. Uh, well, we've got the load lines on there. That one's, like, just on it. Or just above and um, we've got to see when it will become undangerous because we've got from there to there and we've got to fill it until it like goes over and then it will become undangerous. I'd say the main benefit has been the practical skills so when it comes from obviously having ISIS skills in, in year, year 10 and 11 
Um, they seem to have a lot more understanding of things like reliability and validity and uh, precision of data and accuracy of data, just through, largely speaking, doing an awful lot more practical work and investigative work. Plus it gives them the opportunity to think for themselves a little bit. Well, if you want to try something similar at your school, here are some top tips from the teachers at Heaton Manor School. First off, wherever your school is, use the local environment, the local history, to build a scheme of work. Form close partnerships with local businesses or authorities to bring science alive. With every module, be very clear about the science that you want to teach and what aspects of the curriculum it's linked to. And when it comes to keeping pupils engaged in science, emphasise the practical work. To find out how you can take part in Sharing Your Great Practice, then visit the Teachers TV website and find the Sharing Your Great Practice page.